Oh, hi there, Team Arrow. So we are back with Pokemon White, episode 126. Gosh darn it, this is really long. Pretty sure we're going to end, like, next week, though. So, yay! Kind of no, kind of yes, and that's awkward. Um, my personal playthrough file was, like, at least 100 hours, because I usually spend a lot of time training in-game, which, I don't know why, I guess I just didn't, like, pick out good Pokemon or something, because, like, we haven't spent a single day off-screen training, which I kind of thought about that off-screen. I was thinking... Yeah, I'm gonna get my ass kicked by the Elite Four, aren't I? Because those guys are pretty strong, and I'm only like 10, maybe 20 levels higher than I was prior to beating them, so uh, it's not not too good for me. Also, I probably won't be doing those events with Victini or Suicune or Zoroark or Celebi, because they're pretty much over, and there's I don't really see a point in doing them now. I mean, there's even an event for Keldeo where you um, take Keldeo, Verizion, Trachion and everyone else, or Cobalion, Trachion, Verizion, and Col uh, Keldeo, to this one part, which is uh, the the uh, thing of Isaris, whatever it is, uh, the more of Icarus, or Isaris, right, whichever it is, I think it's Isaris, I'm pretty sure it's Isaris, uh, you take him to the moor, and there's a little event there, and you can teach um, Keldeo Sacred Slash or something, Sacred Sword, I'm not sure which one. Uh, the other event would be to transfer Suicune, Raikou, or Entei, the shiny versions of them that you received in Heart Gold, Soul Silver, Pla Pearl, Platinum, or Diamond, into Black and White. And the only way to get the event for that is do not transfer via Poké Transfer. You take them to Castelia. Actually, you go to Castelia City, and you don't have them in your game yet. So you go to this one building. I can't remember which one. And you talk to this guy. It's the guy who said um, was working on something earlier in the game, really early in the game, like in Castelia City. Uh, you go there, and uh, I think you tell them, like, two passwords. One would be um, everyone happy, and the other one is uh, simple connection. Yeah, and it's all in caps, caps, by the way. So, yeah, you tell them that, and then you can transfer your Pokemon from uh, whichever game you have them in. And the only Pokemon you can transfer are the event Pokemon. So, Zor one Zoroark, I believe. Actually, no, not Zoroark. That's silly. There's no Zoroark in 4th Gen. Uh, Suicune, Raikou, and Entei. And then you go to the trailer park, the Lost Lauren Forest, and you get to fight Zorark there. Also, you can also transfer a um, Celebi from 4th generation, the event Celebi. Take him to this building in Castelia, and you will uh, run into Zoro Zorua, the pre-evolved form of Zorark. So there's that. Uh, the Victini event, you basically just download the ticket. It's not available anymore. You can get it by action replay code. You can look that up, by the way, because, you know, if you have an action replay... You probably look up codes and stuff. Uh, what else was... Is there another event? This guy gives me something, doesn't he? Hey, wait, hold up. Slow, dude, chill. Um, okay, it's a thick club, which doesn't really do anything. It does boost the power of Marowak's attacks. But other than that, it doesn't really do much. Uh, let's see if we can get up there, because I don't recall getting up there. Uh, there's also a little event thing that we'll be doing. So this will be a long episode, because, you know, last time I was really tired, and we didn't really accomplish much, because I'm lazy. But today, I'm just going to do everything that remains, and then next episode, I'm hoping you guys can see me do the battle sub move, which, by the way, I think I'll be doing the double one, because, although, yeah, I won't be able to use all my Pokemon there, uh, you'll get to see Ingo and Emmett instead of just one of them, so I thought that'd be cool. Uh, I kind of explained the events. If I missed an explanation for any of the events, just, you know, ask me down, though, down low in the comments, and uh, I'll explain in the comments. The only reason I'm not doing them is because, like, okay, so I found, this is really silly, by the way, so I really, really want to, like, Explain it? I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's really silly. So I found my Pokemon Platinum and I uh, restarted my file in there. It's actually a Tangela, which we will be capturing. So I restarted my file in Platinum and I, I'm doing so good in Platinum. Like, I didn't restart it recently. Like, I restarted this before I started Bloody Platinum. So before I started LPing, I restarted this file in Platinum. And gosh, I'm doing so well in that file. Like, I'm not playing it right now, but I did so well. I only have six badges right now, but I have a level 81 Tyranitar, and you're thinking, Ray, you cheated. You you cheated. No, I didn't. It's that thing I was talking about earlier on, like, really early, like, in the beginning of my LP. Okay, so here's how you train really well. You go to Iron Island, if you get that far. I mean, obviously you will. And you just train with Riley, because his Pokemon don't get experience. So you, you get the experience from both the Pokemon you guys encounter in the wild, because it's a double battle. So that is just awesome right there. So... I got my Tyranitar to like 81, my um, Empoleon to 80, no, Tyranitar is 71, Empoleon, I got an eight, Empoleon for my starter, is like, um, it's a uh, 70, one of them 70, one of them is 80, 
And I'm just like, so well. So like, I got out of there, I'm like, I'll train later, you know, I gotta train up the rest of my team to whatever level I'm at. Uh, I think it's 80, which is really, really well, because nobody even in the game, like, nobody in the game even gets like 80, I think, I think. Uh, I think Barry gets like 79, probably. 75, he gets really high. So, um, I'm doing really well in that game, and when I went, went back to my PC, I was like, well, I'm pretty sure only levels is, like, what I've accomplished. And so I check my PC, right? And guess what? Guess, 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 guess. Okay. A shiny Onyx. I have a shiny Onyx. I named it Shiny Mofo, of course, but I'm not entirely sure if it's legitimate. I'm pretty sure it is because, uh, well, the game doesn't have any cheats in it. Like, like I know I got the Tarantar from a trade with some person named Mari or Mary or am I... M-A-R-I. I'm like, I don't know anybody named that, so it must have been a random trade. The uh, Tarantar was a level 15 Larvitar at the time. Um, it's, it's not that special. It doesn't know Dragon Dance or anything like that. Oh, no! We forgot to read the Tentacle Pokemon's uh, Pokedex entry. <gasps> Le gasp! I should go do that on the Pokedex and stuff like that. So I guess the question of the day would be, are you guys kind of disappointed that I'm not going to be doing the event stuff? Because I'm not really that disappointed because I'm like, um, it's not that big of a deal. Because, meh, I guess I'm just being lazy. So I apologize for that. It's just event stuff that, basically, if you're playing legitimately, you literally can't do these things anymore. And if you're cheating, you literally can do these things whenever you want, however you want. You can pretty much manipulate the game to play as however you want it to. So either side of the spectrum, it's pretty much useless to do these events right now. Or, you know, go back to them ever. Uh, it's like doing the Arceus event, which, in case you guys are new to Pokemon, in 4th generation, there was an event for Arceus. I mean, like, you know, you get the Azure Flute, go to the Mount Coronet, and play it, but you can't legitimately do that. You can only do that by hacking the game. Which, you know, Nintendo does not approve of. Like, this one guy, he uploaded a video of how to do it, with the hacks and stuff, and it got taken down. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that you can put that up now, but back in the day, when, you know, such things... Which is like a whole another can of worms with all the laws that are like laws for LPing, laws against LPing. There's actually laws for this stuff, but it doesn't specifically say LPing. It just I'm not getting into that, but I know this stuff kind of. Where's my Tangela? Because it shouldn't be too high in the Pokedex, and by high I mean up, not like low in number. Alrighty, so it's definitely down there. Yes, yes, I don't know where Tangela is in the Pokedex. I was that kid who didn't know all the Pokemon like order or numbers, but I still knew them in for first gen. Tangela 114, right. Alright, Vine Pokemon, Tangela, um, 303. I've seen that before, haven't I? 77.2 pounds, its blue vines surrounding its body are covered in a growth of fine hair. It is known to be very ticklish. Or not very, just known to be ticklish. That's kind of cool. Tangela is uh, ticklish. Cool story, bro. Let's just wrench your fall into why did I forget my strength? Alrighty, so I don't have strength on me, but I'm pretty sure somebody in my party can learn it. Yeah, Hug Me can definitely learn strength. He's a fighting type Pokemon. I don't think there's a single fighting type Pokemon that can't learn strength, because that would be really silly. Oh, okay, maybe like a really young fighting type Pokemon that can't, like maybe Riolu? But even Riolu learns strength, I think. Pretty sure every psychic type learns strength. Yeah, definitely no psychic type, uh, not psychic. I meant fighting, I meant fighting, I'm sorry guys. See, I said psychic, but I should have said fighting. Str oh, I don't want to learn. F I'm going to forget Belly Drum because I don't really need it. Body Slam, though, that's such a cool move. It's got 85 power without Stab, of course. With Stab, it does a bit more. Um, but it, it has a chance to paralyze, a 30% chance. That is such a good chance, in, if you ask me. That means every third hit is going to... Oh, well, it has a chance to paralyze. Like e With percentages, you'd think like if it's a 30% chance, that means every third hit has a good chance to paralyze. And that's just it. It has a good chance to, but it doesn't mean it's definitely going to. So we got Psychic, which is TM29, 20, 29, as I was saying. And alrighty, so damn it. Alrighty, guys, coolest thing. Okay, so these Tangela all apparently know Ancient Power. They're around level 47-ish to 49-ish. So if you were to capture one and level it up, it would automatically evolve into Tangrowth, which is the evolved form, much bulkier and much more powerful. So yeah, these are awesome Pokemon. They're just, you know, ready for battle. And the thing is, evolving a Pokemon is amazing, because the level gap, I mean, yeah, it's like the stat gap between leveling up and evolving. Like, if a, if a Pokemon had a choice to go from level 1 to 50, or evolve, like, four times, the evolving four times would make it a lot stronger than it would just to go to level... Eh, no, 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 wait a minute. 
I think an evolution is equal to like 10 levels, if you ask me. No, that's not right. Uh, I'm trying to explain that evolution is way more important than just leveling up, because like, you can get to level 100, but a level 100 Charizard is going to like beat the crap out of a level 100 Charmander, so... Not sure where I'm going with this. Anyways, uh, let's go up here. There is a tiny little... Uh, it's not really an event, it's just kind of something you do, so... Uh, hey, it's a trainer. Let's battle him. First Pokemon of many Pokemon is Magikarp at level 60. Second Pokemon is also Magikarp. It is the third Magikarp. Fourth Magikarp. Carp, 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 carp. Basically, that guy has an entire team full of Magikarp, which isn't even that bad, because, like, uh, Magikarp give out speed EVs, and I'm not sure if you guys entirely concept the concept of EVs, which is, like, defeating a certain type of Pokemon gives you a certain type of EVs, and a certain type of EVs will boost a certain type of stat, and basically it's good to get EVs. So if you regulate which EVs you get, like, you know, decide, I want only attack EVs. Your Pokemon, whoever is getting all attack EVs only, will have a very high attack compared to a normal version of that Pokemon. So Magikarp gives out speed EVs, and defeating six of them gives out about uh, six times two, twelve. Yeah. And twelve speed EVs, uh, each, well, every four EVs is plus one in that stat, so if your EVs are not full, which they, you can only have a maximum of a 510 of them, so if you don't have 510, uh, 12 EVs equals plus 3 in stats for whichever stat it is. And my team is full at H full in HP, so let's just switch out to somebody. Well, I guess it would be switching out. Uh, not really, because like we're not in a battle. Uh, Clyde needs experience. Clyde is totally underleveled. And I will definitely need Clyde, because as soon as we get to the Elite Four, which I, I kind of don't want to do the rematch for, but I kind of do, because it's like, ah, it's pointless. Because Black 2 and White 2 are really close, and these, like, the Elite 4 rematch here isn't going to really matter too much. But I still want to do it. So, yeah, here's the thing. The little event thing. Basically, you talk to the girl up, up there, and her Pico, uh, not Pico, darn it. I'm so familiar, like, from, ah, I'm so used to calling Wingles Picos because, like, uh, Pico, because in Pokemon Emerald, uh, Mr. Briny did that, and I was like, oh, hey, yeah, I should do that. So, uh, talk to her, and then she'll be like, hey, go find some letters for me, right? Uh, I mean, yeah. So, there's one over here with this old man, uh, there's one really south of the ridge, like, down here, I believe, and there's one with the lady. I'm not sure, ah, oh, crap, I just wrote down lady. There should be some kind of distinguishing thing about the lady. Oh, let's just go battle this train, not a trainer, okay. Well, let's go up there and talk to her anyways, because we do have to talk to her to start this thing. I mean, you can get the letters before that, letters before that but, uh, meh. The Wingle looks like it lost three grams on Route 13. I wish I could help it. Uh, grams would be letters, so, yeah. Um, have we already defeated this trainer? I believe we have. We've already explored this, just we never did the letter thing, so, uh, let's go do that. Route 13, gotta look for... Oh, hey, it's a Swellow, a Pokemon we haven't encountered yet. It's a flying normal type from third generation. It's basically the evolved form of the Pidgey for that generation, just it had a lot higher attack. So, it's like Pidgey plus Staraptor. But, yeah, it's like Pidgey plus Staraptor, but it doesn't get an evolved form. So, this is the fully evolved form of, um, of Taylo. Basically, in third generation, Swellow was kind of cool, because um, it would get an attack boost when it had a status. Its attack is pretty high, its speed is okay, everything else was not that great, but still, it was a pretty cool Pokemon. This generation, not so much, or, you know, even in fourth generation, it kind of started sucking, because Staraptor, that thing is just awesome, like, freaking amazing at, like, what it does. An offensive bird, when you think of an offensive bird, I think of Staraptor, I don't think of Pidgeot, because Pidgeot is kind of bulky all around. Uh, Swellow, yeah, Staraptor pretty much just replaced Swellow, so, man, that sucks for, uh, Swellow. Oh, that's Endeavor, so basically what Endeavor does is if it lowers your H, I'm um, sorry, it lowers your opponent's HP down to your HP, which isn't good. So let's switch out over to Pylon, which is probably a bad idea, because a flying type is very effective against normal, I mean, against grass types, which is what I'm sending out right now. So, eh, who knows? Ah, uh, no, 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 that's super effective. But I'm very bulky, so I shouldn't take it too harsh, harshly. And let's put him to sleep, because that's what we always do. I probably should have done that earlier. Aerial Ace is like wing attack, just it never misses. And it's just a tiny bit weaker. Oh, he got a critical. Cool. But my attack missed. Oh, no. Oh, crap. This might just okay me. Um. Yeah. Oh, I survived. Awesome. 
And sleep powder hits, so we can now capture Swellow. I wonder if his eyes close. Yep, they close. Some Pokemon don't close their eyes when they fall asleep, which is just a spriting thing. I'm not sure if that's on purpose or if that's like how the Pokemon actually is. It doesn't just. It doesn't appear to be sleeping. Alrighty, so there goes the Ultra Ball. It'll probably capture because Swellow's not too hard to capture, especially when it's low on HP and asleep, like with most Pokemon. And we capture Swellow, so let's hope I don't push A and I can read the Pokedex entry. Swellow's data was added to the Pokedex. 277 in the National Pokedex. Swellow, Swallow, Pokemon. Normal flying type, 2.04, 43.7. Yeah, it's really, um, it's kind of a tiny Pokemon. I always thought of it to be bigger, because from the Pokedex entry, uh, or from the image it gives, you don't really see how big they are, because they all kind of have the same size on the sprite. Anyways, it circles in the uh, it circles the sky in search of prey. When it spots one, it dives um, steeply to catch it. the prey. Oh no, I'm thinking of Wormpole. Whenever I think of prey for these guys, uh, these birds, I think of Wormpole. So eh, whatever. We filled up four boxes here. That's a lot of boxes. Um, Parasol Lady. I should right, right. I should be looking for the Parasol Lady. But before that, we have to heal our Pokemon. And gosh, this is a very long episode. But I really want to get this done today. Because I don't want this LP to be too long. It's already pretty long, if you ask me. Very long. What was the question of the day? I totally forgot about it. Question of the day was... Uh, oh, right. Are you guys a little disappointed that I'm not going to be covering the events so in-depth? Because all I'm going to do is explain them in the comments or... Oh, duh, that's not the question of the day. The question of the day is, um, is there any event you would like some more information on? Hey, it's a Drift Bloom or Drift Bloom. Yeah, it's a Drift Bloom. We haven't captured it, so uh, why not? I should capture it. So it's a psychic flying type Pokemon. It's it's not too bulky, but it's got a massive HP stat. So um, it um, it's cool, but I don't really like it that much. All right, so we're gonna go for the quick ball because it does have a very good chance to capture on the first to first toin. Haha. <laughs> Stay in the ball, and we'll be cool. Yes, we captured a Drift Blim. Uh, oh, coolest thing about Drifloon, uh, I mean, in my opinion, is Aftermath, its ability, so as soon as it gets KO'd, it, like, does damage to the foe, which is kind of cool, because there's not a lot of Pokemon that do that. There's also, um, I think, what is it, Stunk, Skun, uh, it's a, it's a, it's the Stunk, Stunk, Skunk, Skunk, that's, yeah, it's a Skunk Pokemon, sorry about that. Uh, 426 in the National Dex, Drifblim, Blimp Pokemon, well, kind of figured, it's, you know, got the Blimp shape. And it was Ghost Flying Tide, 3 foot 11, 3, what? 33.1 pounds? Oh, wow, it's just all air. I thought it was kind of heavier than that. I mean, it looks pretty heavy, but no, it's just... It, it literally is a blimpy balloon, so whatever. At dust, swarms of them... Oh, swarms? Is that swarms? Oh, okay, swarms it is. Swarms of them are carried aloft on winds. When they when notice, they suddenly vanish. That is freaking creepy. So it's like a balloon that floats around. There's like bunches of them. And when somebody notices... Ugh, scares the crap out of me. It's like balloons, but then somebody sees them, they disappear. Alright, so I could have sworn I heard Talos cry when that Swellow talked. I'm like, what is this? And wait, can it go over the bridge? Oh, derp. That's how I get up the... No, it's not, is it? Oh, well, let's just go talk to this old guy over here. He has a letter, so looking for a gram, are you? Well, could this be it? It fell on my head just now. Haha, <laughs> paper cut on the head. Alrighty, so we get one of the grams, which is, you know, it's just a letter, so it's the first one, that's great, so we're going in order, can't go over there, can we? We can surf over there, so, uh, I think this will actually lead to Kyurem, which we've already captured, so, if it does, it's not that big of a deal, it's just an empty route that we've already taken. Yeah, I think it does lead to our good old pal Kyurem over here, so, no, nope, we don't need to go that way, uh, we can't surf or walk over there either, okay. I always forget about this path, it's like, right on the side. Alrighty, so let's go back and get those other letters. And you're probably thinking, Ray, why are you doing this? Do you get some kind of super special awesome item? But you don't really get that much. I mean, you don't really get that awesome of an item. And Wingle, why are you here? Yeah, so you don't really get that awesome of an item. It's um awesome of an item. It's actually the TM, I think it's TM79 uh, U-turn, which isn't that helpful, but it's kind of cool. Uh... Trying to think, what does U-turn... Right, right, duh! How could I forget U-turn? It's like one of the most useful moves ever. Alright, so you hit your opponent for some bug-type physical damage, and then you switch out. And it's kind of cool, but uh, it's not that big of a deal. Alrighty, so now that we've gotten the second letter... Actually, is it the first one? Gram number three is actually the third one. I was wrong. 
we just have to go find the final one, which is south of the bridge. So this should be south of the bridge. So maybe... I doubt this guy has it, but... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, maybe dowsing machine can find it. The dowsing machine can find it. No, maybe she has it. Um... No, maybe it's over here. Okay, it's over there someplace. So we'll, we'll, maybe we have to go over to the bridge. So let's try that. Oh man, I don't want to run into another wild Pokemon. Come on. <laughs> okay, so I ran into a drift limb, which is, eh, it's whatever. Alrighty, so we gotta go down through here to the bridge, and uh, yeah, that should be south of the bridge. So somewhere this, yeah, old man probably has it. Nope, no, he's a trainer. Of course he's a trainer. <laughs> First and only Pokemon is the ground fire type from third generation, Camerupt. Alrighty, with that trainer out of the way, we can just, uh, well, pick this up over- Oh, it's a Razor Claw. Uh, I don't actually remember which one does what. I'm so confused, I'm not even gonna say anything. I'll just have any little video editing thing, because I usually say it wrong or right the first time and then I mess up. So, we've got all the grams, so let's return them over to this trainer next, or uh, right on the bridge. Okay, so it's a Lunatone, which is a really weird Pokemon. I mean, it's not weird, but we haven't captured one yet, so... Wait a minute, shit, I should've gone for the Quick Ball, whatever. That's fine. Uh, Cosmic Towers, uh, it's gonna boost its defense and special defense, which isn't gonna do too much, because... Well, it's actually gonna be helpful, because we're not trying to KO it here, we're actually trying to... Oh, crap, what if I get a critical? Ooh, that did shit for damage, so let's switch on over to, uh, Pylon, because Pylon doesn't have anything to fear about... Lunatone. I mean, yes, it's a psychic type, and Pylon is a poison type, but I don't think it's gonna be too powerful, so... And, it's under level, so we shouldn't have too much trouble here. And from the look of things, it's just, uh, bulking itself up so it can take some more hits. Uh, I would try a Grass-type attack, but even with the, um, the plus two in special offense, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't survive it. And there's always a chance I could get a critical, so I'm not gonna try that. Crap, I missed an embargo. That means I can't use my items on uh, Pylon, but if I switch out, I can use them on other Pokemon. Or Pylon, because I've switched out, so Pylon doesn't get that uh, status thing. I'm not sure. Wait. Yeah. If I switch out, does embargo still take effect? Because it only lasts for five turns, right? Oh, well. I don't remember, so let's just go for the Ultra Ball and capture this Lunatone. It's a rock psychic type. Pretty much, it's it's a clone of Soul Rock, but... Or Soul Rock's a clone of Lunatone. I don't really know. They're just, uh... They're really similar. Just Solarock can learn fire type attacks, and I'm not sure what Lunatone can learn. If you ask me, I think Solarock is better because it seems more offensive, plus it gets fire type attacks, and it has the same typing, so it gets stab on all the attacks Lunato Lunatone gets, but it gets fire type attacks, so fire is a very useful thing for a rock type, I think. Especially when there's a lot of steel types out there. Anyways, 337 in the National Pokedex, Lunatone, Meteorite Pokemon, Rock Psychic Type, 3 foot 0 3, 370.4 pounds. Because it turns active at night on a full moon, it is said to- what? Oh, derp. Uh, even I could have figured that out. I mean, it looks like the moon, so obviously it's got some some relation to it. Which I don't mean to, like, you know, stereotype that it looks like the moon, so it obviously has something to do with the moon. It's just, well, this is Pokemon. It's kind of, you know, they do that on purpose. Alrighty, so once we get this it what? The item is- where is the item? Oh, it's- down there. Okay, I was like thinking, wait, I should probably get the item because it is showing up on the dowsing machine. But actually, I probably can't because, uh, well, it's really far away. So let's just turn on a max repel. That's not a max repel. That is fair. Where's the max repel? It's like right over derp and right there. Derp, I missed it like twice. Alrighty, so let's return these letters to this little girl over here and get our prize. Oh, great. Could that be a gram? Let's show it to Wingle. Wait, I have to show them, like, one by one? Oh, that's fine, too. Okay. Oh, sweet. Okay, so we can just show them one, and it'll take all... I'm not sure. Maybe you'll have to have all three at once. Anyways, now that Wingle is happy, I think we get an item from them. Which would be absolutely nothing at the moment. Wingle flies away with the letters, which you had to drop. Oh, whoa, it dropped an item. So, that's cool. So, it's TM89. Oh, I thought it was 79. See, there's that problem. It's a U-turn, which has 70 power, 100 accuracy, and it just causes you to switch out after hitting. So if you go first, faster than your opponent, that means the Pokemon you're going to send in is going to take a hit. But if you go after the opponent, let's say your scissor uses it, scissor, um, then your like the Pokemon you send in doesn't take any damage. So that's pretty cool. It can be helpful for that. Um, there's an item over here. I'm going to see if anybody in my party can learn cut. And by that, anybody, I mean hug me, because eh, I don't want to teach anybody else cut. Uh, if you can, yeah, if not, otherwise, oh, uh, balls to the face, we're not gonna get that, I guess. Oh, that sucks. Well, with that done, we're pretty much back to Lanku Osa Town, which I guess I'll do one little thing. Let's go hear the rumor about Kyurem. After we get Kyurem from our PC, I just want to show the old lady Kyurem. I keep, I see, ah, I keep hearing that it's Kyurem, 
and I keep calling it Kairim, but I, like, I've seen in the, I've seen in the Japanese movies, which aren't yet out yet, but I haven't seen them, I mean in the trailers, they say Kyurem, don't they, with a Q, right? And I'm, like, thinking, well, they'll probably change it to Kairim in the English one, because in the movies, the movies, uh, in the movies for Arceus, oh gosh, the naming for Arceus is so wrong. Like, in the movies, they, I don't think they officially decided, like, in the Japanese one, it's Arceus, and in the English one, I think they said Arceus once or twice, and then Arceus somewhere else. Like, I'm not sure if it was in the movie specifically, so I'm just gonna go with Arceus, even though I always say Arceus instead. I should be saying Arceus. Wow, that was a mouthful. So let's just grab Kyrie. It shouldn't be too far on the PC. I mean, we did capture it rather recently. Uh, no, it's actually in the previous box on the PC. It's the last one. Oh, that makes sense. Bashful nature, that's not that bad. I named it white because it's going to be white. So let's take out um, Polyrath and put in Kyurim or Kyurim, whichever it is. I don't really... Like, until the English movie is out, I can't really decide on the move. Er, then again, maybe... Um, yeah, I'm not going to decide on anything for name-wise until, like, they say it in the English anime. Because I do tend to go with the anime with what they choose for the um, names, most of the time at least. Unless it's like, um, oh, Repel were off, so the old lady can't be repelled. No. Uh, let's just talk to her. Well, he hello there, young traveler. Would you like to hear an old story of Lankuosa Town? Of course. Bear with me, because I'm an old lady who likes to listen to the old-fashioned... What? Who likes telling the old... Tell ah, tales of the old-fashioned ways. Cool. Okay, so there's a great big hole back in this town. A long time ago, a huge meteorite... Or meteor fell from the sky and made the big hole. A very scary monster was hiding inside the meteor. People say the monster appeared in the village at night, bringing a cold wind, and it stole away people and Pokemon. So the villagers built a big wall to keep the monster out, and made the rule made a rule that no one could go out after dark. Of course, nowadays nobody believes in such things, but you know, even now the people. Wait a minute! If nobody believes in such things, does that mean the monster went away, or that monster was not Kyurem, and you guys are just blaming Kyurem for no reason? Because I don't think Kyurem was doing that, because he's still here. Then again, he went away recently because I captured him, but, you know, why would nobody... Bl uh, whatever. Even now, the people of this town stay inside at dark. Isn't that strange? I guess old stories and old traditions have some influence on our cu current life. Yeah, but that makes me think. It's like, uh, nobody's inside the house? That's weird. Like, it couldn't be Kirim because, well, because if it was Kirim, wouldn't Kirim still be doing it? Or Kyurim, whichever it is? Yeah, that's my reasoning for that. Like, why would he magically just stop? So it wasn't him, it was some other Pokemon. So stop blaming Kyurem or whatever. Anyways, that about wraps it up. Remember to leave a comment, or, yeah, a comment. I'm trying to think, what's my question? My question could either be, are you guys disappointed that I'm not going to do the event stuff entirely? Because it's entirely pointless. I mean, besides showing you guys that, guys that stuff, and the only event you guys probably haven't seen would be the Keldeo event, which I really don't want to do because it's not legally out yet, and that'd be really... That's like, you know, let's say you make this really awesome piece of art, and you want to show it off, but not until, like, next year. And some douchebag takes it and shows it off this year just so he can t get the credit for that. That's what I think of when somebody does the Keldu event, where they show it in, um, the more of Icarus. When Nintendo hasn't officially released Keldio, and so it's kind of going against what they want, so I'm not doing that. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure why I'm at the PC buying stuff, though, so meh. Question of the day is, are you guys disappointed that I'm not doing entirely like all the events or is there any event you would like more details on because I can fill you in on the comments down below. Anyways, leave a like and a subscribe if you already haven't. Bye!